discussions around benefits of a green home, benefits of a smart home, the first a month, second month, that's a lot of what we did. Uh, I think it's high time to start telling people the benefits, right, rather than the futures. Why should I put my money into buying a house that I'm not going to live in? Okay, that's what I want today's conversation to be. Why should I? I'm not going to live in the house. Um, I'm in diaspora. I never want to ever go back to Nigeria. Nigeria is messed up. It's a rubbish com country, like a lot of people always put. So why should someone like me still invest uh, in a green and a smart home? That's the purpose of my own teaching today. And I think it's important we have those conversations because conversation we're at a time where um, people are really, really worried about um, where to put their money. Um, the world is shaky. Nigeria is also shaky. Nigeria economy has been struggling, and, and um, we all know that. And um, but the the conversation today, I believe, is going to add value to a lot of people's life. Uh, I can assure you. Um, the few minutes with me, where you just allow me to do my presentation, I can assure you, be glad that you're here. You'll be glad with the conversations that we are making. Um, what are the the first question for me will be if you don't put your money into real estate where else should you put it or where else are you likely to put it and a couple of the places number one is the bank that's the first place people put their money okay we, we want to put our money in the bank and somehow we have been deceived to believe that the bank is a safe place to put in your money um, but reality is that the bank is the, is, is the worst place to put in your money because you are actually not getting any returns. The bank end up using your money. And uh, if it's in Nigeria, they end up not giving you any return at all. If it's in developed countries, they give you some coins, right? Um, on your money. So you give the bank and sometimes the reasons why we fail to realize how important this uh, conversation is, is also because we are not conscious of inflation. Inflation is always what is messing up your money. So if you give the bank, you keep up, keep, let's say a million dollars in the bank for a month, even if you're in the US, okay, at particularly for 2020, inflation, rose to almost 5% in the US because of COVID-19. And what is inflation basically is about more money being in circulation. And when you have situations where more money is in circulation than goods and services, then you have inflation. And it's normal and it happens day in, day out. And COVID made that happen a lot more. And the reason was because uh, people had to stay at home um, as a result of COVID-19. So it meant that government was forced to be printing money. Okay, they were printing money and you and I had the opportunity, but well, not you and I, because I'm not sure we in Nigeria got that. <laughs> uh, but those of you abroad, you got COVID palliatives for your business, for a lot of things that you do. But what that means is that there is now more money circulation than productivity, than products and services. So what's a typical layman conversation is that what you were able to buy before now with let's say $1,000 right now, you need between 1,200 to 1,500 to buy it. That's the typical layman explanation, okay? Uh, and I'm gonna play a video shortly that will help you understand this better. Don't put your money in the banks, okay? Because the banks will end up giving it to people like us to invest with that money, to do something with that money. We'll, we'll pay back the bank. We'll give the bank a lot of interest. If it's in Nigeria, we'll give them as much as 200%, 15%, 25%. Guess what the bank will give you? Less than 
that's what they will give you back. Um, and, and that's just the reality of it. So conversations like this is very important to have, and I'm glad that you're here. Um, before we get going, I, I can see more people just join us. Tell us your name, the city you're joining us from. I also appreciate it if you guys can also share the details of today's event with your friends and your loved ones. Um, and, and let's get as many of your loved ones here. Let them come, let them be part of today's conversation. I promise you they will get value. Um, they, they will get value and they will thank you for inviting them. And I think that's very, very important. They will thank you that you invited them for the event. Uh, and I think that is key. So I want to start by, yeah, let me see some of you are here. I think some people are introducing themselves. I have Ken De Ola Super. Welcome. Um, I have Moses Lago from Lagos, Adedeji from Lagos. I have Akin Tunde Adebayo from Ogun State. Welcome, welcome. It's our custom. We always introduce ourselves, you know, to I have Awuni from Ghana. Awuni, how are you today? Thank you also for joining. Um, Simi Ilori from Lagos, Victoria Madubuche, uh, Hebenz Latunji. Um, Farouk, have they shared the video on all AY Life, um, all the other uh, influencers that we have, and are we streaming also there? Yes, okay. we're currently streaming. Com confirm yourself, please. I have Olaide from Lagos. Um, I have Nicola Zorita. Good to see you. Dr. Jumoke Kazim, Nature Scape Consulting Lagos. Good to see you. Fola Moses from Lagos. Akima Day from Lagos. Ebenza Latunji from Abuja. Omawumi from Lagos. Rocky from London. How is London today? I'm learning how to pronounce London. I used to call it London. <laughs> I've been told that is wrong. So London, um, Rocky, I hope I'm correct. Uh, hey, I shall be Olorisha from the US. How are you? How was your movie uh, um, promotions? I hope it all went well. Okay, so we have a lot of us joining and I believe more people are joining. Thank you, sir. You're welcome, you're welcome. I believe more people are also joining us shortly. So let me play this video as we get started today. Um, I have a lot of stuff on my screen. Let me move everything aside. Can you guys see my screen? If you can see my screen tab, I can see your screen. Just type that. Okay, if you can see my screen tab. I hope I'm not being blocked by. Okay, beautiful. So I'm gonna play the video again. Uh, you have $100. You decide to put that money in your savings account in the bank to keep it safe and earn some interest. The bank then gives your money to a borrower in the form of a loan. The borrower then pays back the loan plus the interest to the bank. At the end of the month, your bank says, here's your $100 and here's a small amount of interest we promised you. So anybody in the room that's got money in the bank, sorry, you're financially illiterate. You get an F. It's ridiculous. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna, I, I'm sure you were shocked by that video. I'll play it again the second. You have $100. You decide to put that money in your savings account in the bank to keep it safe and earn some interest. The bank then gives your money to a borrower in the form of a loan. The borrower then pays back the loan plus the interest to the bank. At the end of the month, your bank says, here's your $100, and here's a small amount of interest we promised you. So anybody in the room that's got money in the bank, sorry, you're financially illiterate. You get an F. It's ridiculous. <laughs> okay, so there's something called uh, uh, um, financial literacy. Unfortunately, they do not teach it in the university. We we'll go to university, pay all these Zoom sum. Some people are in their 50s, they are still owing student loan, right? And you owe the university a whole lot of money, but they don't even teach you money. 
They don't teach you about money. They don't teach you about financial literacy. They don't teach you about financial freedom. They don't teach you about how do you become financially free. So today, and the conversation I'm making is literally another title you can give this is financial freedom through uh, rental income. Okay, how do you become financially free through rental income? The first thing I want you to, to talk about is about cash flow. Now there's something called cash flow. Cash flow is basically how you are able to make money, residual income without working. Now we have two types of money. We have what we call active income and then we have what we call passive income. Now, until your passive income is more than your active income, you are not yet financially free. Again, I'll break it down. I know that it might be a bit uh, uh, um, complex, but I'll break it down. Active income, passive income. So what is an active income? Can anybody guess? I want this class to be very interactive. I want you to engage me. Remember to share this uh, um, you know, information, tag as many people as possible, share, share, get everybody in here, invite as many people as possible, very key, right? So what is a passive income? What is an active income? Can anybody just guess? When we say passive income, when we say active income, what does it mean? What's the difference? Thank you, AY Comedia, I appreciate you. Thank you for joining. Um, so what is it? Active income, passive income, what is it? Can everybody help us? Okay, uh, let me see some of you on Zoom. No, let me see, Zoom chat. Um, nobody, nobody's saying anything. So Rachel Guade Michael Akata says, active income is salary gotten from your job uh, or your business. I think from your job, that's okay. I, I'm not sure we should uh, add business. That when you say business, that begins to complicate it. So active income is the money you make from your salary uh, or from self-employment. You know, for example, a footballer is paid 150,000 pounds a week in England. That's an active income. Okay, can I tell you the guy can still be a poor man? I don't know if you agree, can still be a poor man. 150,000 pounds per week. How many of you agree with me? He can still be a poor man. If you agree, type I agree. If you don't agree, type I don't agree. Okay, <laughs> uh, for those of you who think you don't agree, I think you should Google it. Ex footballers who are broke. Now I'll tell you the reason why. One of the reasons is because first of all, a good portion of that money goes, uh, um, to, <laughs> goes back to the Queen of England, Her Highness, Her Royal Majesty, okay? <laughs> and it's a substantial amount. In fact, that substantial amount sometimes is as high as 20%, 30%. 40%, depending, okay? I just had finished a meeting with my accountant in London. And he was telling me that on every property that um, we buy in, in the UK, we will have to pay back Her Majesty, 19% of our profit. Can you believe that? 19%. Oh, that one shock you. I think the one that shocked me the most is that the salary that I pay my staff in London, I remember London, I'm learning how to call London. I have to pay Her Majesty 13% of their salary that I pay them salary. I say I have to pay back 13% of that. Now that's good for a business. What individual tax, you know, uh, people pay individually is even more than that. Corporate tax is always lesser than individual tax. So you've seen situations where a lot of these footballer, number one, yeah, they pay a lot in taxes, but not just that also, is there is an active income. You can always go broke 
no matter how much they pay you from active income. And that's what people are missing. This generation do, do, is missing this part. And that's why I decided to say, you know what, today, I don't even want us to talk much, too much about uh, the type of estate we're building, green and smart. Let's even first educate our people on wealth creation. Let them even understand what it means to build wealth. What is an active income? What is a passive income? Now, nobody ever becomes rich from the active income. They can only temporarily be comfortable in the long time. And there's guarantee you will become 60, you become 70, you become 80. A time comes, you don't have the energy to work like you used to. So what then sustain you is called your passive income. So your passive income is an investment you've made, okay? The returns you get from an investment that you have made out of your active income. So in the active stage of your life, if you are not putting your money, right, into something active, if you are not putting your money into something active that will now sustain you, you will, you most likely will remain poor for the rest of your life. And that's one of the things we'll be saying to young people, they're not listening. So now that you have an active income, you must begin to think, what if, God forbid, something, I could lose my job. God forbid, I, I can have an accident. God, okay, what if I grow old? How do I have a passive income that guarantee that I can start making money and I'll be making money till I die? Does this make sense? Guys, I need your reply. If it makes sense, type, it makes sense. It makes sense. Everybody, like I told you, I love a very interactive class. I love an engaging class. That's what me, I love doing. So when I do lectures, you see me always ask you, does it make sense? I, did you get value? Are you learning? I'm always big on that because this is supposed to be interactive. Okay, beautiful. A lot of people say it makes sense. It makes sense. It makes sense. Exciting. I'm happy to hear from you guys. Please keep engaging me. I love a very, very interactive class. So do we now understand active income and passive income? If you understand, type I understand. Okay? If you understand active income, Passive income, type I understand, if you understand that. Now, let me tell you why most Africans, okay, are never millionaires and billionaires. It's because what we only chase is active income instead of passive income. In the most creative season of our lives, whether you're an actor, thank God, uh, uh, Shabi is here, uh, who's an actress. You actor, actress, footballer, singer, um, an employee. In the best part of our lives, what do we focus on? Active income, salary. And then our goal is can they increase the salary? Can they increase the salary? And no matter how much they increase our salary, we think we are comfortable. But after a while, that money doesn't make sense because remember, your expenditure will always rise, okay? to your income, no matter how much that income is. So what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to invest in what we call a passive income. So as you're making money now, you have a job, you have something, keep some aside, and that's some that you keep aside, begin to invest it into something that guarantees regular return. Now, what is one of the most sure passive income that you can put your money into? The most sure, because there are many. You can put your money into Forex. You can put your money into cryptocurrency. Nothing bad with it, but it's high risk, right? And many of us also do that. Again, that's also another mistake Africans make. When you now say, oh, let's now do investment. The only thing that many of us as Africans do is put our money into high risk investment. I will be shining the crypto. Eh, this person made 200%. Eh, eh, Omo, eh, they don't die. We are making this money. Nothing wrong. By the way, not only do I invest, I teach people how to make money from that. <laughs> so I'm not saying you shouldn't. But that is a high risk investment. High risk investment. There are three types of investment. Okay, low risk, mid risk, and high risk. Forest, crypto, 
high risk investment. Very, very risky. Odiqua risky. Okay? <laughs> so if you then put all your investment money into that, you can lose the entire thing. Of course, you can make a lot more, but you can lose the entire. So wisdom demands that you don't do that. And unfortunately, like I said, this is why we don't produce so many millionaires and billionaires in Africa. Because it's either we are only keeping our what? Uh, we are only relying on active income and increasing our active income. Or when we even decide to save and then invest to, for passive income, we then go on the high risk one. Now you also have some reasonable ones like uh, uh, mutual funds, like um, treasury bill. You and I know what has happened to treasury bill now. It's less than 5% in Nigeria because of inflation, right? And the fact that the, the CBN is trying to put pumping money into the system. So if, I, if you tell bank you want to even do fixed deposit, they are not interested, right? So there's too much money in circulation the economy is not doing well. So you don't make much from that. But what sector is doing well? Real estate. Can everybody type real estate? Everybody, come on, type real estate. Come on, talk to me, guys. What sector is doing well? Real estate. Now, I remember what hearing um, the, uh, what's his name? Um, we have this, is it ESCC chairman? Okay, speaking very recently, and he was saying that he is shocked that, you know, uh, we don't have, we have a situation in Nigeria where uh, properties don't lose value. And all over the world, there's this, you know, when you buy property, properties always lose value at some point, the real estate market always crash. And I'm gonna give you the reason why the real estate market in Nigeria has not crashed and will not crash at least for the next 20 years. I'll tell you why. Right now in Nigeria, we have over 17 million housing deficit. Can everybody type 17 million housing deficit? Okay. We have over 17 million housing deficit. Now to take care of this housing deficit, you need more than $20 trillion. Can everybody type $20 trillion? And the reason is because you don't just need to build houses. You still have to do road. You still have to do electricity. You still have to do running water. So to be able to provide 17 million housing unit to, to, to take care of the housing deficit that exists right now, you need more than $20 trillion to do that. Now, also, not only do you need that kind of money, you and I know Nigerian government <laughs> in, the last, <laughs> in the last 10 years, I've not made, I'm not sure they've made $1 trillion. I'm not sure. So you know there's a problem there, right there. Number two, for you to even do that, even if the money is available, to see take another 10 years. Now, with the rate of our population growth, right, in 10 years again, what has happened? You, the population will have grown by more than 20%. Because again, somebody once said that he thinks that we need to look at population growth in Nigeria as one of the causes of poverty. You can argue with the person, but there's a data there. Average family is giving birth to three, right? Some are even doing more than that. If my Igbo brothers and sisters, average is five. If you are an Igbo man and you give birth to five children, you try, they will even say it's small. Some do seven. Some do a lot more than that. Okay? We have not even counted the baby mamas and the baby daddies you know, and those opportunity even open doors for a lot more, right? So what is that telling you? The real estate sector is heavily under pressure to provide housing units to make sure people can have a good place to live. Ibejuleki is the biggest, okay, biggest real estate boom right now in Nigeria. Can everybody type Ibejuleki? Come on, everybody, type Ibejuleki. 
the biggest boom, right? The biggest boom right now is Ibejuleki. Everybody type Ibejuleki, right? So why is Ibejuleki property rising so fast? You have Dangote Refinery, you have the largest uh, um, uh, um, um, uh, 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 seaport, you have free trade zone, you have big industries there. The jobs that have been created in that axis is more than a million, directly and indirectly. And in the next two years, uh, by 2020, the seaport will start running, Dangote Refinery will start running, that even will go double. Do you know, as I speak to you, there is no decent house in Ibejuleki. There's only one completed estate in the whole of Ibejuleki, as I speak to you. And it's not just Ibejuleki, it's almost from, um, once you pass uh, uh, um, some areas, right? And once you pass, I think um, it's Koscharis, right? Once you pass Koscharis and you're coming down, you barely do not have any habitable modern estate except one, okay? And that one, as I speak to you, five bedroom goes for 8 million naira per year. Can everybody say yeah? That means if you buy five bedroom for 80 million naira, in 10 years, you made back your money. And for the rest of your life, you will continue to make, and by the way, in 10 years, you know that rent will go higher. Because if they are charging 8 million before the launch of Dangote Refinery, before the, uh, uh, um, the uh, seaport starts working, before the full uh, activity of the free trade zone, you should understand what is going on there. Now, for you to even understand what I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen, have you ever tried to buy land in a uh, free trade zone? It is $200 per square meter. Can everybody type $200 per square meter? $200 per square meter. Can somebody help me multiply that? $200 times 600 square meter, how much is that? In the free trade zone. That's the government oh no. $200 per square meter. Average of one plot uh, is that, so 200 times 600, $200 times 600, how much is that? Come on guys, engage me. I love a very interactive class. Engage me, engage me, and share, share, share. Invite as many people. Uh, for this uh, uh, event, because I really want our minds to be open and we're able to learn and, and grow. Yeah, so $200 times 600, can anybody do that? Ladies, okay, somebody says 120,000. Is that correct? So to buy 600 square meter in the free trade zone from the government of Lagos State, it will cost you 120,000 US dollars. Can you turn that? Uh, um, somebody let me turn that to Naira. If we do, so ladies and gentlemen, okay, 63.6 million is how much you need to pay to get a plot of land in free trade zone from Lagos State Government. Let's just say roughly 63 million Naira, one plot of land not the house. So if you are not hearing, you can buy 300, three bedroom, green, smart home for 60 million. That is a giveaway. That is a dash. And there will be infrastructure. There's road, electricity, running water. That's a dash. Because Lagos State Government is selling land, land, in the same area for 63 million, approximately 64 million land. And the excuse for it to be that high is that, you know, they are providing infrastructure also. That's the excuse. But again, we are providing that as well. So what you realize is that that is giving you an idea of what is happening in that axis. It is a boom. Now, how many of you want to make money from the boom in Ibejuleki? If you're interested, type, I'm interested, I'm interested. By the way, are you enjoying today's class? If you're enjoying this type, I'm enjoying this. And I hope uh, GTEC staff are also joining us. It's important they do. 
right? Because for me, like I said, in, in marketing, it is always better to sell the benefits than the futures. You mean business, because even me as a businessman, I will only go for the benefit, not the futures. Yes, it's a green and smart home. I can use my phone to open the you know, remote control, um, renewable energy, all of that, beautiful. Thank God for that. But what do people want to hear? The benefits. How does he add money to my pocket? How do I become rich? By buying a property in Jasper. Farouk and Mata, you get what I'm saying now. That is what I want to hear, right? There's nothing wrong with telling me, of course, the uniqueness of the estate, but I'm more interested also in how do I make more money? And that's the conversation we're doing today. And it's important that even GTEx team gets in there because it helps them to be able to educate our customers and they can understand, right? Because the reason why we're stopping the sales of land is because we are losing. We are selling for 20 million, the same property that free trade zone, the government is selling for how much? 60, 64 million approximately. It doesn't make sense, right? We're losing, okay? And that's why we just say, well, land, let's just pause there. But for me is that the more money is in the building of the house. If you can get an, a house of your own in Ibejuleki, the opportunity that that does for you is called cash flow. Remember what we talked about earlier, passive income. How many of you remember passive income and active income? If you remember type, I remember, I remember. Passive income and active income. If you remember type, I remember. So, okay, good, we're well, back to it. Passive income. So let's do some mathematics, ladies and gentlemen. Let's assume I decide to buy. Um, Farouk, how much is five bedroom in Jasper? Right now. 80 million. Huh? 80 million. 80 million. Have you guys made the adjustment of the dollar price that just happened now? That was previously. The way it was selling for 500, so it's increased now. Please, you guys need to make those adjustments quickly. Else, because what happens is, you know how building materials goes up. How um, we used to buy cement, uh, 2,600 is now 4,000. With what has happened now to dollar, watch out. It's probably going to go to 6,000. Iron rod used to be like 350,000, is now 500,000, right? Because when you hear price increase, some of you don't understand the back end implication. It's not as if developer want to just increase prices, it's because of the back end. We, we don't manufacture land. <laughs> we spend money to buy things to build, right? And once the dollar goes high, because most building uh, uh, materials are imported, everything also goes high. And that's how this thing works. But 80 million as of today, let's hope you're able to buy before the new dollar increase is added. Now, let's do it this way, 80 million, now, you, the current price to rent out a five bedroom in Ibejuleki, that's if you are able to find one, okay? Is how much? Is eight million per year, right? Eight million, can we multiply eight million times 10, right? That means in 10 years, what has happened? You have made back your 80 million, step one. Step two, for the next 50 years, so you go and be with the Lord, you will make a lot more. Now, I will tell you categorically that we will not say you make back your money in 10 years because in reality, as soon as Dangote Refinery kicks off next year, as soon as the seaport kicks off next year, rental income there will rise to about 12 million. And that's just the truth because there's more pressure, increase in population, more people are in that location and they want to get their stuff. And uh, you know, right now as I speak to you, how many of you know that Dangote has 10,000 expatriates that are living in temporary shelter inside Dangote refinery? If you know, type I know. If you don't know, type I don't know. I'm talking about Indians, Chinese, who, because of the nature of their work, 
could not, they did not allow them to be living in Aja. Some of their expatriates are living in Aja, uh, like, uh, um, uh, because that's where they could get house. Some are even living in Lekki because there's no house. So inside the Dangote refinery, they had to do like with Stampoline, temporary shelter for 10,000 of those expatriates. Can you imagine? So the caliber of people who will rent your house, I've said it to all our subscribers, if you are buying into GTEx, Jasper Estate, and Rosellium housing project, GTEx will personally guarantee the tenant. I don't know if you think that's cool. If, you, if it's cool, can you type cool, cool, cool. Everybody talk to me, type cool. We will guarantee your tenant. Because right now, like I said, the only estate that is in that axis is already sold out. And they told me, that they are getting several requests every day from all the companies there. And they are telling them, there's no place, not that we don't want to give you. We just don't have, we are sold out, right? So I guarantee you that we will get the company to rent it out for their people and it's expert trade that will stay in your house and your rent is guaranteed. Now, you need to also face the reality that that rent is going to increase to about 12 million. So in literally seven years, you've made back your return on investment. And this then means you are making from 10 to 15% return on investment year on year. The first year, okay, you probably will make about 10%, but going forward, it's increasing. The good news, and this is very, very important that you hear, is that you will not get that rental income in the UK. By the way, you can buy property from GTEx homes in the UK, we sell property in the UK. You cannot make that in the US. By the way, GTEx helps you to buy property in the US. We do that. My favorite of all, you cannot get that in Dubai. What we promise our clients in Dubai is about 7%, okay? And annual returns, right? On, you know, in terms of when you buy property from us in, in Dubai. So you can, this is a return you are only able to get in Nigeria, okay? I don't know if you think this is cool. Come on, type, this makes sense. Okay, if you think this is, you know, very exciting, type, it makes sense, it makes sense, it makes sense. Everybody talk to me. Type, this makes sense. So this is why we're telling you to take advantage of the opportunity that exists. And like I've always shared with many people, unfortunately, many of us don't understand the power of real estate. It is how any nation becomes financially free, real estate. Any nation that becomes wealthy is through real estate, right? It's through real estate. If you get real estate right, you are bound to become rich for the rest of your life. Um, I, I, me, the guy, I like to uh, boost I my, my ability to take risks as a businessman. So I'm going to start the video again, but here is that you notice when you, when you visit. Hopefully, some of you get to visit from next year. We're going to start some trips for our clients also. One of the things I notice in Maldives is that they are just building, you know, do a lot of infrastructure on their local population. Even their airport is under renovation. Meanwhile, you will find five-star private island hotels in Maldives. So the government quickly partnered with the private sector and started building what can guarantee cash flow. You see what we're talking about? Again, cash flow, consistent income. Because here in Maldives, you pay 10% tourist tax, right? On it, if you stay in a hotel, they pay 10%, minimum 10% on anything you buy, anything you're lodging. So government quickly finished, even before they finished their airport, even before they, they, they finished their own residential program for their own population, they rushed to do that of guests that are coming in and that can give them cash flow. But let me share this video with you. This are quite dangerous things, you know? But I do them to help uh, boost my ability to take risks as a businessman. 
taking risk is your job. Again, okay? you're always taking risk. See an opportunity, put in 500 million, put in 100 million. You can lose, right? But if you don't build the capacity to take risk, capacity to dare, you won't do that. And that's why many people are poor because they analyze till they are paralyzed. Analysis leading to paralysis. Mata, the way you are looking, it's like you're scared for me. Like, I'm just, <laughs> I can see your face. The way you are looking is like, okay, hope it won't, <laughs> it won't drop it to the water. <laughs> you know, I was but, really scared. <laughs> I can imagine. Like, oh, my God, will not drop inside water. Oh, my salary is gone. <laughs> oh, my, my dreams, my this vacation is gone. <laughs> but, um, but the truth is that even nations who understand real estate, they first put in money into what? Passive income. So all these islands in Maldives, you're able to have all this experience. By the time I'm done with my divs, you know, with all our guests that we're also bringing, probably hundred thousand dollars has gone from me alone, right? Uh, and my staff that are spending vacation with me. But that is how wealth is created. Wealth is created through real estate. And if you understand that, you understand how to build wealth so that you can rest and sleep. When you have two units of rental income, three units, you can easily take retirement and relax and retire and be sure that money will keep coming from your tenants, particularly an estate structure that we're doing, and you can just take a break. And what we have assured every investor, we guarantee rent. We guarantee that you collect your money. We will manage it for you if you give us that permission. You can also decide to rent it out by yourself. But if you want us to help you, we will do that for you. So you are guaranteed to keep getting passive income. And that's how to become financially free. That way, even when you stop working, you keep making money. Even when you go to be with the law, your children, children keep making money. And that is how you build wealth and that's how you become financially free. Does this make sense at all? I thought some of you are gonna clap for me. I thought this is a good uh, conversation that we needed to have so that you understand the benefits of buying a house, okay? How the benefits of buying a rental house. And the reason why I'm also doing this is because many of us as Africans, when we think of buying a house, the first thing that comes to our house is our mind, is where I'm going to live. So when they tell you that, oh, this is not for you to live, this, I'm not really thinking about that. Let me tell you this. I have never, okay? I don't have a residential house in UK. I don't have in US. I don't have in Dubai. Okay, but guess what? I've sold properties in millions of dollars in all those locations. Why? Every investment I do there is for what? It's for rental income or for sale or to be able to make money, right? And not for, oh, I did my own house. No, no, I don't do that. And we, until we are, re, you know, reorientated, to understand that that is the first priority. Passive income should be the first reason to buy real estate and not your residential accommodation. Passive income. Because what you need to know is that your house is not an asset, it's a liability. You tell me, renovation is the how. Land use charge is the how. <laughs> and several other bills that you need to pay. That's the how, okay? That's the how. Because you build a house, 
it still takes money from you. It is the house that you rent out that you purchase for the purpose of rental income that is an asset. Even in business, look, let me give you an example. We, we do property investment in the US and the UK. When you want to buy a house uh, in the US, right? And you bring your lender. How do they do the evaluation? What's this? What do they use to do evaluation? Particularly when it's commercial real estate. Cash flow, that's what they use. They use cash flow to do the analysis. I say, okay, if we borrow you this money to buy this particular property, how much money is, will keep coming in? That's what your lender, whether it's the bank or private lender, that's what they check, cash flow. That's what they check. If all that you would prove to them is just residential, they would think it twice. Also, when you look at equity on your property, what usually makes a property to gain equity is usually, again, being surrounded by cash flow. I showed some of you in the US when I, when I was in New York, my student who bought his property in New Jersey, right? In three months, he got 50% increase in equity. You know why? The house was facing one of the best hospitals, the top five best hospitals in the whole of US. The house is facing it. Now, I can tell you if that house was not in that location, he would not have grown by $50,000 in three months. That, he wouldn't have gotten that in equity. No. So when you think real estate, everybody, I want you to type this. When you think real estate, think res, uh, uh, cash flow. Everybody, I want you to type it. Whenever you think real estate, think cash flow. Type it, everybody. Again, whenever you think real estate, think cash flow. I want everybody to type that. Whenever you think real estate, think cash flow, meaning think rental income. That's another word for it. Think residual income. Think consistent income. That should be what you think. And when you are not seeing that, I think you should pipe low, like um, somebody used to say, right? So you, what you should be thinking is, Hey, I want to buy this property, cash flow, rental income. How much can I start making every year? Not that, oh, you see, I want to go to my largest palatial house to show them that I'm not meant to go there. Chief, Chief Ego, one <laughs> of GTEx community. You <laughs> know, they don't die. <laughs> That's not what you think of first, okay? <laughs> think of income, think of rental income, think of cash flow. When you now have all these various cash flows, you can then join my brother, Obi Kobana, and go on. In fact, I told somebody, I said, if you like, okay, you should be raining your own dollar from a chopper. I was telling you, I said, when I'm ready, Maybe my own is from chopper. We'll just be, we'll just be offloading the money from helicopter. That's how we spray. <laughs> but the truth is that many people don't know about Biko Banaka's event viral. Is that the man has clubs? <laughs> Probably has the largest chain of club. And some of these club, if you don't have five million, you cannot enter when they do their events. What is a club? Cash flow. Can everybody again talk cash flow? Now, indeed, he did all this lavish, whatever. He has more than three hotels. Go and check it out. Right? Because some of you, the money is sprayed. And it's not even him that sprayed. It's the money they sprayed on him that made sense to most people. Instead of seeing business, you didn't know that that thing, that party was a source of cash flow. How? All the big boys who came, where did they lodge? In his hotel. That event also pop popularized his hotels and his clubs in that place. Where did they went to spray money? In those same hotels. Because you have given the guy a national name now, he's going to start competing with me now in Lagos. You see what you people have caused? You know, I think he just, he just showed uh, his uh, new estate in Aja. Okay. 
Because now he has realized you he was thinking of bar before. But but the way people shouted, <laughs> so you know what? Let's in now, man, let's take the whole of Nigeria. Eh? <laughs> so, but the reality is that a lot of people cannot see the cash flow in that entire, you know, uh, um, transaction. What most people are just seeing is that the mice, they were spraying money, they wasted money. You didn't understand that was a business transaction. Pure business transaction took place that day. Okay? Come on. Are you excited, guys? How are you excited? Talk to me, guys. If you're excited type, I'm excited. I'm excited. Oh, beautiful. Choma, it seems even you want to buy right now. You're ready to buy Jasper. <laughs> okay. Uh, for those of you on Instagram, kindly repost if you had um, indicated. Kindly share that again, all over again, please. Apologies. Share that all over again. Um, nobody was monitoring before. So on Instagram, on LinkedIn also. Um, <clears throat> we also take question, by the way. I uh, will take question. Um, for La Moses says, doctor, please, um, in five minutes, can you say a few reasons why Green and Smart House is visible at Ibejileki, considering that um, there will be factories, refinery activity going on in that area? Whoa, beautiful question. I love that question. So number one, the location where I state is, is either, um, so Jasper, for example, is where the forestry is, right? That location has been allocated for zoo and forestry. So it's the, it's the green, that's why the, um, it has the gazette. It's the only area that has the gazette approved gazette in that area. So government also planned it and it's far enough and far away from the refinery and it's even area for green area. That's also why the golf course is there. And that's why a few minutes from us, you have the La Campagne Tropicana. So that area is actually designed for green, for recreation. Uh, anywhere in the world, there's a refinery. There's also places for leisure because the quality of people who invest in in, in, in buying refined petrol in large quantity. A lot of the, those wealthy people also need where they could live around. The expatriate who work there. So the government had planned that. The other parts that we also have estate in Bejuleki are before the refinery. Okay, and also those ones are, um, are also not affected. So those were, those were already factored, factored into our decision. And for government to give building permits is also because um, they have considered all that. Remember, that's still where the free trade zone is. And remember that free trade zone is not all industrial. There's a lot of residential there. Um, so that's very, very important. Another question that people always ask me is about, and by, uh, is, uh, is also that, oh, will it be too congested? Um, look at what happened to our papa. A papa wasn't planned well, right? When you look at the Bejuleki, it's better planned. First of all, there's a coastal road, um, which is even bigger than the current express road. There is a train that is linking to the port. A papa never had a train. There is the sea and there's the lagoon. So what you then have in the Bejuleki is that you have access by road, access by the uh, Atlantic Ocean, access by the lagoon and, and access by train, four sources. So you don't end up having what was happening uh, uh, in a papa. And plus, even if what happened in a papa happened, remember what we told you, your focus for buying real estate should never primarily be about where you want to live. It has nothing to do with where you want to live. As I speak to you, I don't live on the island yet. I'm not even someone who likes living on the island. I live on the mainland in Nigeria. But how come I have four estates on the island alone? And I don't even have four estates on the mainland. It's the same reason. You don't do real, real estate for sentimental reason of, okay, me, I prefer this area. Me, I prefer that area. That's not, many of our parents made that mistake. That's why, their houses still remain in Abuleg, Bauju, Elegba, Mushin, Bariga, and did not appreciate it today. 
Go and ask the older ones. They will tell you if I had known. That's why I would have bought. Many of them were saying, oh, but like it was mash, uh, VI. Go and meet people who are 87, 85. They will tell you that in those days when they give you VI land, you say no. They, it is too much. But obviously, today many of those people are regretting. Okay? Uh, and the reason why they are regretting is because I could have lived in my mushi and still invest in Ibejileki just for investment sake. But people didn't know what I'm teaching you today. All they knew then was buy a house for where you will live. Nobody thought of buying a house for investment. So today now you look at it, look at Victoria Island. Most people are not living in VI again, but they are turning into commercial. Look at Ikoi. So what happened to those areas? Even if people refuse to live there, it turned to commercial. People who still invested are still getting good returns. Right? But unfortunately, many of us, whenever we are, we are thinking real estate, the first thing that comes to our mind is, ah, where am I going to live? Where am I going to put my family? That's not how you think. Like I said, told you, I don't think that way. I don't like the island. But I have more investment on the island than mainland. You know why? Property appreciate more on the island. It's not sentiment. It's not a, you don't do sentiment in real estate. It's a, purely about money. When I came here to Maldives, let me tell you what I've decided I'm going to do in Maldives. I'm already making an inquiry. I'm buying an island here in Maldives, right? I'm building a very massive palatial uh, uh, resort just for one family. The goal is when I'm doing vacation, I use it. When I'm not doing vacation, my billionaire friends can rent it and live there. Because I was shocked that the rent uh, per room here is between $600 to $3,000 per night in Maldives. So again, why am I thinking of doing island in, <laughs> okay, in Maldives? And I'm not thinking of doing island in Nigeria. Hey, Oga, okay, money. You go for where the returns is. It's business, ladies and gentlemen. Do I get returns? Yeah. Why am I not even thinking of Ireland, in the US, or UK? Returns. I've never seen it. It's, you don't even get that much in Dubai. Even the palms, you don't, you don't, $600 to $2,000 per night. That's a lot of money. I sh so for me, I just made up my mind, I'm going to build something here. So that's the way you should think when you come to real estate. You're thinking where I can make high return on investment, where I can make good money. That's how you think. Not even sentiment. In my village, in my father's town, I don't have one plot there. Will I ever have a plot? Yes. After I've built a cash flow like Obi Kobana, I will. <laughs> okay? In fact, my plan is to build a uh, um, uh, university later in my village. And when I built a university, remember university is also a source of cash flow. At that point, I can build massive. I can even build my house on 20 acre, one man. But the way you start is you first put your money into what can give you what? Cash flow. Everybody type cash flow again. That's what you do first. After you have done your cash flow, then you then move to that. And that's how you do. Um, again, um, um, again, I don't know. Some of us ask questions that are quite funny to me. If an estate is costing us, right, over $2 billion to build, is it drainage that will be an headache? I don't know what, you know, some questions are just funny. Again, it's the reason why I ask you to watch certain videos. Well, let me tell you the difference between rich people and poor people. Rich people take risk and money is the reward for the risk they took. Poor people analyze till they are paralyzed. Two different way of thinking. One is about, uh, well, let us analyze it, drainage, water. Uh, I remember growing up, I don't know if you know the Bar Beach. I don't know if you used to know Bar Beach. If you know Babi type, I remember Babi. If you don't know, it means you were born in the 90s. Farouk, bring down your hand. 
Where did you know? I know, sir, I know Babich. Are you sure? <laughs> How many of you know that it, uh, well, those of you who are old enough remember when we come to Victoria Island? Remember what used to happen? Flooded, right? All the bad beaches. They be careful. Water everywhere. Enter everybody uh, uh, house and all of that. Remember the same bad beach. What is the new name now? Eco Atlantic. Ladies and gentlemen, per square meter, I hope you know, is $5,000 in the Co-Atlantic. The same bad beach. <laughs> bad. Where is all that water that was carrying people away? Technology. They did the same thing they are doing in Dubai to the place. Dredged the whole place. Now they are building skyscrapers there. Those people who left bad beach because of water, are they not regretting today? Because you will, your property will have been opposite, directly opposite Eco Atlantic, the most expensive right now. So always think long term, guys. Always think long. Real estate, eh? That's why I always tell you guys get a real estate mentor. It's not something that you just do out of, you know, get somebody who understands how real estate works to help you and open your eye to how you do real estate. I want to thank you all for coming. God bless you. I leave you in the hands of Farouk and the team. Um, um, have a wonderful day. If I've done well, feel free to clap for me. Feel free to shout. Um, this is the equivalent of what comedians do. After they do everybody, oh, Michael Jackson and some people faint. You know, but I, did, I don't need you to faint anyway. But, <laughs> <laughs> but really... What you have learned is going to make you well, Jack. I promise you. Whether you even buy real estate from us or not, what I've just taught you now is, is definitely going to change your mindset about how you see real estate. Love you all.